I think first, I think first things first, I think we have to make sure that you pick right. Yes. Amen. 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 You know, awesome. you know, pastoral relationships, just like marriages, generally speaking, awesome. fa fail in the selection process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Establishing connections within the church, right? There's alliances in, 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 in cities, um, you know, joint cities that can be, you know, the pastor, or, or do, put it this way, what you encourage a church, a freestanding church or non-associated uh, church, non-denominational church to join an alliance of, of, of respected pastors in terms of for mentorship? Me personally, I would. Uh, I think it's needed, especially if you're a freestanding church. Uh, there needs to be some accountability, but I often say, uh, I continue to regurgitate this, that it also starts with those who you put in leadership at your church as well, too. Yeah. You can have outside influences, but those who are in the church uh, need to be able, you need to put people in place who are going to be able to speak power to truth, be able to question certain things, be mm -hmm. able to say where the money is going, to be able to say what was that message about, be able to look at the structure, be able to look at the administration of the church. Uh, all those things are important. And it all starts with leadership at church. So I'm a big advocate of making sure that that the powers that be are in place in the church and that you don't have uh quote unquote uh figureheads. Uh, that's important that you don't have next. That's that good. you don't have uh a rubber stamps that are just agreeing and, and okay and everything. I think that's uh ultimately important as well. But yes, absolutely. I think that um you need that uh leadership, you need that guidance for, uh, from other elders. I think that's important. Uh, again, this speaks to the uh, accountability. I think Every everyone needs that. As I mentioned before, uh, there was no such thing as just a one pastor in the first century uh, in Palestine. It was it was unheard of. You didn't have just one person. It was a reason why it was uh, the Sanhedrin. It's a reason why you had the Council of Jerusalem and Nicaea. Uh, it was a reason why these places were put so one person wouldn't be running running rough shot. So yes, I'm in total agreement of having other in, in, inside uh, outside influences uh, to help you mentoring and grow. Yeah. Let me ask, I'm just going to throw one more question out there. And, and, and how how do you manage the process or the, the, the organization or organism, as you stated, but the staffing organization in within your ministry where one person is not or the balance of power is not shifted to one person or through just a group? How do you do that effectively? I thought Adam, go ahead. Go ahead, Pass. Oh, I thought Adam was going to go to um, I think first, I think first things first, I think we have to make sure that you pick right. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, awesome. you know, pastoral relationships, just like marriages, generally speaking, awesome. fa fail in the selection process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, it is not to say that you need to be looking for the person that don't want the job. I'm not saying that at all, mm -hmm. uh, because the Bible says if a man desires the office of bishop or overseer, he desires a good thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you need to find the one that don't that don't that don't want the job, mm -hmm. uh, but what you but you do need to make sure that the one that wants the job actually understands what the job is. Good point. Okay, mm -hmm. and you know it's like a lot of people that said that 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 want a wedding but don't want to be married, right? <laughs> but they really don't understand what the job is. Mm -hmm. I think that from a pastoral standpoint, we have to make sure that we're picking people who don't think more highly of themselves than they ought to. You know, that understand the power of God in this whole process and are and and are dependent on him to make things work. Because anytime you get a pastor that says, Oh, well, we can, oh well, we can do this, but then what we need God for then. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, so, so, so go ahead. Well, I was going to say it, it becomes very easy to move God out of the process mm. and I sit on the throne. Right. So you have to understand. All right, give me a quick second. I'll be. I'll be. I know we got a we got a clock, but I'll be out in just a quick second. Okay. Uh, in the life of every believer, there's a throne and a cross. There are two articles of furniture in the life of actually every person. Mm -hmm. there's a throne and there's a cross. For the unbeliever, Christ is on the cross, mm -hmm. and I'm on the throne. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. In right. the life of the believer. Christ is on the throne and I'm on the cross. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. 
Yeah. Oftentimes what we find yeah. in our churches, though, uh, is the pastor who sits on the throne and we see it in our pulpits. Yeah, you know, they're shaping them. Mm-hmm. And we see Christ on the cross, mm-hmm. on the wall right. somewhere. Right. Well, it, it, well, though though that is simply sim- though, though that is symbolic. symbolic, it is also emblematic of how the church operates. Yeah, that's real. That's real. Whereas the pastor becomes the final say in everything, and can't nobody say nothing to him. And when he speaks, it's just like God speaks every time. Mm-hmm. And that's just not the case. So mm-hmm. you have to make sure in the selection process that you're picking someone that one can be corrected. Yeah. And in the interviewing process, you need to be asking that question. When was the last time you got rebuked? Yeah. 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 And how did you you handle it? What what was it for? And how did you respond to it? Right. Right. Ask ask that question. When was the last time I got rebuked? Yeah. Who rebuked you? What was it about? How did you respond? Mm -hmm. And and give me their number. I'm going to call them right now. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Right. And why do you do that? Because you know they're not expecting that question. Pastor John, did, can we call angels down? <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> right. You know they're not expecting that question, so you know they haven't had time to prepare the person for the call. Yeah. Right. Right. Give, give it to me right now. We're gonna call them right now. I want to hear. I want to hear their story. I want to yeah. hear that story. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and but but that will tell you whether or not that person is humble enough to be accountable to someone else. Mm-hmm. Very powerful. And, and so so we will take up this up. I, I said we've got six minutes left. But what, where I part of where I was going with that question, too, is when you see other individuals, how, how you, you see leaders or pastors that neglect the leadership roles or they uh, delegate leadership roles that they should be overseeing to other individuals and allow that power to swell somewhere else. Right. And, and, and then that creates chaos and it creates all kinds of issues in the church as well. So which supports what you just said in terms of even the pastor all the way down, regardless if you're allowing someone else to lead and you are the pastor, you're still leading. Right. That you're, you're, you're still leading. And just unfortunately, you're allowing them to lead you into ungodly, uh, you know, an ungodly uh, status as opposed to, um, you know, being a true leader in and out with the people. Hey, guys, it's Pastor John here. Please, if you like this video that you just saw hit that like button for us. Second thing I want to ask you to do is to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We're putting out videos once a day at about 5.30 p.m. Hit that bell notification so that you'll know when a new video has been uploaded. And then the final thing to do, share this video, share this information. If you know somebody that has a need that it can be benefited by it, please put it out in circulation so that we can try to help as many people as possible. Thanks and God bless.